Because I was going to say, if you affirm that mind exists, then there has to be things that are not material in nature, but immaterial in nature too. You're still using argument for ignorance. Why? Because we don't know how we have the objective morality, so we're assuming that it's God. It's like with science, yeah? When you have different theories, you evaluate the theories, and you follow the theory that has the best explanation and the most evidence. Yes. Right. We need some kind of yeah. simple, we need a single po point where yes. we stop. Exactly. The question is, is what is that? Right? Why is it your God? Right now, it looks as if the best explanation for objective morality is a God of some sort, a logically necessary being. Yeah. Won't say any more about it, just a logically necessary being. For now. Would you, would you agree with that for now? For now, yeah. Hey! Are you okay with being on video? So basically what I'm saying is this instead. I would imagine that if someone did something to you like they stole from you. So recording that. Yes. If someone is uh, stealing from you, you would object to that on some sense of that is wrong. Well, because it damaged me. Right. So you would innately hold to some view of objective morality. Do you understand what I mean? But it's not objective morality. Right, but therefore, if you understand that though, you were consistent with that intellectually, you would have to say something like, although I feel wronged, there is no real basis for me to condemn that action. It is simply my opinion and my view, and probably my upbringing, and probably my culture, that has made me condemn that. Yeah. But if you were consistent with that, there isn't any real reason you should actually be angry. You were, you were just conditioned to be angry. Well, but it damaged me right. at the moment. Like if you steal from me, yeah. I had a property and I lost it to you. Yeah. And then, because it damaged me, I condemn it, first because it damaged me, and then second because of the reasons that you said it that might surprising probably to damage. But again, on your foundation of morality, even if you say these things that it damaged you, it caused yeah. you harm, that's not a real objective standard. You're saying yourself yeah, there's no real objective standard. Right, in which case then I say that actually it's, it's the other way around. I say based on subjective morality, harm is a good thing. To you, it was good thing. Exactly, yeah. so it's arbitrary. It is. But you that's don't act as if we, it's arbitrary. That's why we have look. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, you don't act in your own personal life as if it were arbitrary. You act as if it's objective. If someone hurts your family, do you say, well, it's just arbitrary, you know, I have these feelings, but I was just raised that way. It's not really wrong. It's just subjectively wrong. If someone hurts my family and I can't no, you, you deny go after, my you, you go after them and you say, that's I'll horrible. go to law and we like, come but and do you yourself will say, that is wrong. And innately, your experience tells you that it is objectively wrong, which is why you get angry. It makes no sense to get angry over something that you intellectually think isn't real. Do you understand? I understand your point. Right, but so I'm you're not being consistent. Well, because... <laughs> exactly, right. you're not being consistent from your perspective because you're claiming that there's objective no, 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 morality. From your, uh, from your perspective of it being subjective, you're not consistent because you intellectually say it's subjective. Well, the fact that I say that it's yeah. subjective, right. it implies that it's inconsistent because subjective changes from time to time. Right. Why so would you hold to an inconsistent worldview? Well, because it differs from situation to situation. But if it differs from situation, well, I would say it does objectively. You would say that's just culture or that's just arbitrary choice, law. Could be whatever it might be. Some human somewhere decided that was wrong. But you don't act that way. What I'm saying is in your own life, if you think of times when you've been wronged, I promise you that your innate emotional experience will tell you it's objectively wrong, not, not subjectively wrong. If it did, you wouldn't get angry. You would simply say, well, that was his choice. But then you're saying that this objective morality that we have, it should come from an objective being. Yes. But and I think that God is the best explanation of that objective being. Well, then that's argument for ignorance. Why? Because we don't know why we have the objective morality. So you're implying that it's God. But then when I when I when you ask me to prove that it's not God, I don't have a proof because it's not God. So because would, I don't know, and you don't know we, how we have the objective morality. So I would so say using this, argument from ignorance. Oh, no, no, no. I, I will actually go further. This. Let me explain. I would say that the best explanation of objective morality that I think we all experience is that there is an objective we source. We say that there is objective morality. But there is an objective source that is logically necessary and the greatest conceivable being. This is the basis of theism. So the, he would agree with that as a Muslim. <laughs> so, so we would say that God is the source of goodness and the greatest source of goodness from the objective point. There is no possible world in which God does not exist. So God is a logically necessary being. Therefore, and I would say that God is a mind, and because God is a mind, it is from that single mind that we get our understanding and experience of objective morality. Now I think that accounts for objective morality. Now I'm perfectly happy for you to say, actually there's a better way to account for it. 
And if you can give me that, I will happily listen to it. But I think that theism is the best way to account for objective morality. But the, you literally did the same thing, but you just changed the phrasing. You're still using argument from ignorance. Why? Because we don't know how we have the objective morality, so we're assuming that's God. No, I'm saying there's I good to reason. Prove that no, it no, is God. I'm saying there's good reason to think it is God. Namely, that God is a mind, and a mind is the source of all objective morality because it's minds that experience an objective morality. God is a logically necessary being, means that it's not contingent on anything else, and hence we'll explain its objectivity. It's not subjectivity. Like for example, I am subjective, right? Like I'm not a, I'm a contingent being. It doesn't matter if I die tomorrow. It doesn't mean anything about the moral world. If there was objective morality, which I think is innate, and we experience it, the only way, in my view, that you can explain that is by an objective source that has to be logically necessary. The only logically necessary minds that we know of is God. That is my argument for God's That's the only way that you are putting to explain it. Give me another one. I would love to hear another objective reason that explains objective morality. I don't know. Hey, now that's a more like an argument from ignorance. If you want to affirm objective morality, which to be fair, you haven't, but if you wanted to, and you said, I simply don't know, that would be an argument from ignorance. I've given a positive case as to why God is the best You are using arguments from ignorance. But I just gave you um, arguments. No, you did not. You did just not hear detailed, my argument. I heard your yeah. argument. Okay, what's my argument? Detailed, you just detailed right. your argument from ignorance. Right. We're still, we, I need a proof. You said that logically there should be a, a, be, a mind being that created that uh, objective morality. They didn't create it, it's an eight within that mind. Okay. So think of it this way. So is God, is God, should God go through our morality, the objective morality? So is God forced to go through what's right and what's wrong? So God is not forced to go through the laws that he sets for humanity. because so he sets for them. humanity. He sets the objective laws. Morality. I'm making a difference between morals and laws. So the laws that are meant for Israel, that are meant for the world, God is not abiding by. But the moral nature that he has is innate within himself. So God is the greatest goodness. God is love. God is that objective morality. But then he's at the same time, he's the greatest bad. The greatest what? The greatest worst, the greatest Why is killer, it? the Why greatest is it? bad. Why? Well, because from the, the morality implies what's right and what's wrong. You're just taking what's right and you're leaving what's wrong. I don't understand what you mean by that. Are you trying to say that God is evil or God is bad? Sir? Well, yeah. But then let's not jump to that argument first because we're still in God himself. Oh, yeah. Look, I, I think that argument gives exp explanatory power that explains objective morality and why we experience it. But now, if you are you unable like to, to give believe, a, so you would like to believe in that argument because that's the only argument that we've got on the table. No, no, we have many. That's just one I picked. I, we go to another one. Do you want to go to another one? I'd love to hear. It. Okay, so before we do that, for I objective do think morality. Well, no, for God's existence. existence. No, for source of objective morality. Right. Okay, the so only thing that we have on the table ah, you know, is God. Right. So you would like to believe in that. But no, no, I think God is the best explanatory yeah. of that objective because morality. Because that's the, the only thing we have on the table. The only thing that's viable, yeah. Yeah, because you asked me to give well, you another I'll, one. I'll give you another one. Let, another let one. me give you another one. No, no. So but, uh, about the source of objective morality. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm going to explain uh, what else could be the source of that objective morality. Okay. You could say it's an abstract object. An abstract object in philosophy is something that doesn't have a concrete implementation on the world. Like for example, I'm a concrete object, I exist in the real world. An abstract, con uh, abstract object would be like the number three. Okay. Now, the reason why I don't think an abstract object could be the source of objective morality is because an abstract object doesn't have any causal power. So in other words, it can't cause anything to be. The only thing that can cause things to be, like right and wrong, would be a mind. And I think that would be the singular mind that we would describe as outside of space and time and I would define that as God because that fits the criteria that philosophers follow for many thousands of years to describe God. Now you can refute that by either finding a fault with it or you can say here's a better explanation of objective morality. No matter how many sources we list of objective morality, we don't know how many are there. Sure. Yeah. So on giving the ones that we have on the table, let's say we have 20, you decide to choose that one because that was the most believable thing to you. It has the best explanatory power of how we have objective to you. morality. Well, I think it's convincing. I don't see it convincing. And many theists because also agree. Saying, because I'm still seeing okay. that because we don't know how many on the table we have, you're just picking that one. I don't know no, how no, many no, no. on the table. It's like with science, yeah? When you have different theories, you evaluate the theories 
and you follow the theory that has the best explanation and the most evidence. Yes. Right. How many theories we have, we know. But right. here we don't know how many. Okay, have but we don't know how many scientific theories there could be about <laughs> gravity in the future. But we, with the, based on the science we know now, we make our choices now. So based on the philosophy we have of objective morality about how that could potentially be, we pick the one that the that it best conforms to reason, that best explains the reality that we experience. Now, you don't seem to be convinced by that, fair enough, but I think that your disagreement is not on the argument itself, but on the fact that you feel as if there could be another explanation, we simply don't know about it. We respect, I think that's more of an argument from ignorance. Sorry? We respect, I think that's more of an argument from ignorance, because you're saying, I don't know about others, others could be true, I'm not going to say it. I think if you were consistent, you would pick the one that is the best currently, and you would follow that, which I implore you to do. I, I, I'll be repeating myself now, which I don't okay. want to go okay, That's fine, that's fine. Because Should we move forward then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, another argument for God's existence would be the Kalam cosmological argument. What is it? Okay, so everything that, uh, everything that has a beginning... No, hang on, give me a second. Uh, everything that has a beginning has a cause. There we go. Everything that has a beginning has a cause. Thank you very know. much for that. I know the that universe argument. began to exist, I know it, therefore I know the universe has a cause. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I'm agnostic, oh, I'm not atheist. Oh, 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 fair enough, fair enough. I thought you were atheist, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the no, argument. I know the argument, Okay. but then, let's say that we have a series, I will say, but then, why there should be a cause to the to the universe, you would say because everything we've observed has a reason for it. A cause, so then, yes. yeah, yeah. A cause, then there should be a cause for the universe. Yes, that follows. But then I would ask you, why do we stop to God? Why there's no father of God? Or there is no grand creator of God. The reason why is because necessarily that wouldn't solve anything. We need some kind of yeah, simple, we need a single po a point where yes. we stop. Exactly. The question is, is what is that? Right? Why is it your God? Why is well, well, it's wait, not wait, the wait, grand wait. God? I'm not talking about Christianity yet. No, no, I'm talking uh, about the God that we're assuming. Yeah, okay, so one second. Let's, let's rationally deduct exactly what we can describe about this God. This God would have had to have been outside, outside of space. He would have had to have been outside of time. He would have had to have been immensely powerful. Yes? No. You don't think so? He Why should he? He was the origin like nowadays, of the universe. Because nowadays, yeah. we can create my phone, the one that I have right now, yeah. is more powerful than me. And someone, a human like well, me, I would disagree with that. I think the human mind is more powerful than a phone. But well, but then my phone, my literally my calculator, if I go in and I put some random number that I can't solve myself, it will do it for me. Yes, but you have consciousness, it's your more phone doesn't. Than me. No, 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 you're, you're more intelligent than your, your phone. You have consciousness. I literally you just showed that my phone your, can does functions more yeah, than your, what I your can math, do. Your phone can act as a computer, but you're more, you're as a human, more than a computer. You're not just material. Well, I'm, I'm you're just also functions. mind. I'm functions working. Do, do you think you do you have a mind? I do apparently. So okay, so you think there is there is uh, the material world and the immaterial world? Sorry? Do you affirm that? Sorry. Do you affirm that there's a material world and an immaterial world? I don't know. You don't know. But you do think you have a mind. I think. So I'm getting you to think about these things, but because I was going to say, if you affirm that mind exists, then there has to be things that are not material in nature, but immaterial in nature too. Well, yeah, I would like to believe that there right. is some immaterial. Okay, but so that's belief. Fine, but does your phone have a mind? No, no. but you do. But then, how me having the mind makes me better than my phone? Because you can do things your phone can't do. You can. And my phone can do things that I can't do. Sure, sure, but only so in one area. If it's by things that who can right. do more. Right. Then my phone can do way what, more what? things than it can do. No, no, you can do way more things than your phone can do. No, you, you, can, you can empathize, you can socialize, you have awareness, you have and spirituality, these are things that you, you have morality, you have reason. Your and phone these are things, things, things that you chose they're better because of the circumstances that we live in. Scientists would find my phone more useful than me because my phone no. does things more useful than me. No matter what you build as a machine, you still need humans to operate, fix and maintain the machine. The machine never replaces the human because the machine simply cannot do things that humans can do. Humans are self-aware, humans have self-consciousness, we have emotional uh, ability, we understand reason. A, a machine doesn't reason, it just follows a series well, of instructions. But then, yeah. what makes these things, objectively, better than what the things that my phone can do? Do you believe that reason is objectively true? Reasoning? Re yeah, reason. As an idea, as logic. Yeah. Right. So you believe that you because can reason? Because that's the yes. only thing that we're trying to use to prove Right. It. In this argument, we are yeah, assuming exactly. reason, right? Yeah. So we both assume that we believe in that, there's value in that, right? That's why we're talking about it. Because we assume that that's valid, we actually have innate within us the assumption that it is objective. Otherwise, what are we doing? Right. So we, are, we do affirm the objectivity of reason. We also do the same for morality.
goes back to what we said before. And ultimately, we do the same for truth. Because if we didn't think truth was objective, we wouldn't talk about it. Why would I be as passionate as I am about the truth if I thought it was all relative? Right, and likewise for you. So I think you do actually affirm the objective truths of many things. And I think the explanation for those, of the origin of those things, is to be found in the greatest conceivable being outside of space and time, of whom is a logically necessary being, and it's not contingent. Because by affirming the basic theistic premise, you have a robust philosophy to which to launch yourself into having explanation, explanations for these things. If you, if you don't have that, you have a lot of inconsistencies and a lot of difficulties explaining why objective morality is true, why reason is really something you should follow. Why not be a nihilist? Why not deny the objective world? Like, why not? Like, I can't do that because I think there's an objective source outside of myself that is logically necessary that I'm called to follow. Well, that's exactly... We're going back to the same point, which I don't like to repeat myself. But because the only thing that we have on the table is the sentient being that you're talking about, God, I think there are, remember, I did give examples of other things. Yeah, but, but these are limited. We don't know how many are there. Right, uh, sure, just in the same way we don't know how many scientific theories there are. But we always follow the best scientific theory. To our, our knowledge. To our, to our knowledge. You know, I'll, I'll be, okay, how about this? How about we say, right now, it looks as if the best explanation for objective morality is a god of some sort, a logically necessary being. Yeah. Won't say any more about it, just a logically no, no. necessary being. For now. Would you, would you agree with that for now? For now, yeah. Hey, that's good. That's good. I think that's a good basis to launch yourself on. But follow that. Follow where that leads. Because it leads to great uh, philosophical truths and ultimately, I believe as a Christian, to the truth. Because now you're getting into questions about who is that God? Is that God a personal God? Is he a deist God? Is he like a machine? And those are interesting questions. And I, and I would humbly implore you to look into that. It's nice okay. what you just did. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice what you just did. Okay. And I, I see it. But then, first, you still did not agree on objective morality because I still don't see you it. Still don't see it. Yeah. Well, I second, remember. I think that if you were to be consistent, you would have to affirm that you yeah, at least. I'm act. telling you, yeah. I'm not consistent. Well, that's honest. That's honest. Yes, I'm telling you because I'm telling you that it's subjective. There is no objective morality. That's then the world is absurd. Well, it is. I mean, ultimately, the Nazis are not either more right or wrong than us. For them, for their time, they thought that what they were doing right. Well, I, I couldn't believe in that because I wouldn't. I need a basis philosophically to be able to condemn Nazism. Yeah, that was me when I was a believer. I needed a basis to condemn Nazism. Mm. But then it turned out that it's all for nothing. Why is it all for nothing? Like, the existence is for nothing. Sorry. Sorry. My claim for existence that is for nothing. So even if we condemn Nazism, for their, they thought that we're doing the right thing. As us now, we think that by condemning them, we're doing the right thing. So it's subjective. But I think that you would have pushed hold to the fact that you think that Nazism is objectively wrong. Sorry? I think that you would condemn Nazism. Imagine for my time. Because why did, why did people support Nazism? Oh, absolutely. People at the time were brought into that idea. But I don't think that has any bearing on whether the subjective morality or objective. The point is, is it just proves that people can be convinced. And I completely agree, people can be convinced. But I think that there is an ob objective law that says that Nazism is wrong. So I can stand on that and I can say, regardless of what any man thinks, regardless of what you think, I think, anyone here thinks, but then why there should Nazism be, is still wrong. But why there should be an objective thing that condemns Nazism? Because I think that best explains my experience, your experience, and the experience of most people here. Okay. Because most people feel innately that there is something objectively wrong about Nazism. How can you, how can you say that not because the way we're brought up? Because I think that there are situations when you're... You think? Well, I think this is, again, this is my, my thesis, yeah. my explanation, right? So I think that people can be brought up to be brainwashed and to not allow their experience to, to uh, affect their, their reality. For example, with deep respect, when you tell me that you yourself acknowledge that morality is subjective, I think you're kind of going to do the same thing. You're denying objective experience, what you experience, and you're simply explaining it away intellectually. I think people back in the times of Nazis, they did very similar things because there was immense political pressure to do the same. When the Nazis went around killing Jews, I think deep down they knew what they were doing was wrong, but they have been brought up to not acknowledge that. You can read, for example, um, there's a book, uh, I think it's like, uh, I can't remember the name of the book, but there are books that detail the experience of SS troops who did this. And they openly say they cried as they did it. Yeah. That there was something in them that knew what they were doing was wrong, but they believed so much in the ideology. So a question. Yeah. yeah. 
if probably you've heard that example before. If we get a child on day one, we put him in a room where there's nothing around him, and we give him food so he continues living, and he does not know anything about the world outside. And then we tell him what Nazis did. So you think that he will be like, that's wrong? Yeah, I think that if you remove uh, certain influences, there are people who innately understand what the difference between right and wrong is. But then I, what I would say that I think... So actually, what I will say though, is I think that if you took someone completely out of so, in, into social isolation, they didn't know anybody, then I think that person would have serious problems. Because we know that in order to be a healthy person, you actually do, because we are social creatures. So whether we like it or not, you can't put the truth in a vacuum and say, take it away from the human mind, ignore all of that, treat it like a mathematical equation. Okay. You can't do that. So what you're yeah. saying is that the experiences that we live, yeah. should we should live through them to influence our decision. Yeah, we cannot separate ourselves from our experiences. Okay. But I then think that our experiences can reveal things. For example, when you grow up in others, with others like a family, you understand what it means to empathize. You understand that if someone screams in agony, there is something innate within you that looks at that that goes, that is wrong. I would say that if you don't understand that, you that's have what a you're mental... claiming without an evidence. Well, I think it's best explained the evidence. That's what I'm saying. You can, you can, that's uh, you can circular possibly... logic. Because well, I'm no, asking no, no, you for no, evidence, no, 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 no. and then you're saying that's what best explains the evidence. Yeah. We're going. No, that's, that's that's fine. That's perfectly balanced. I'm not assuming my own that I'm all automatically true. I'm simply saying here is something we observe that we believe is true, like that you know there is suffering in the world. What best explains that? I say it's because innately we have some kind of experience within us as human beings that can look at something evil occurring, and and that thing that we experience is a reflection of what actually is. In the same way that when you see something, you are seeing the objective world. When you hear something, you are hearing the objective world. I apply that same logic for those senses, and I apply it to morality. Because just like those senses, morality is a sense. I sense right and wrong. If someone came up to you and just hit you in the face, God forbid, something in me would tell me that's wrong. No, I think because we're constructed to think that's wrong. Do you think that's true for any of your other senses? What do you mean? So, do you think that the reason, that when you see something, like someone came up and hit me, and you saw it with your eyes, do you think the only reason you saw it was because you were brought up to believe that you would see it? I would say no. You no I think you're, yeah. you're clearly seeing it, right? But I think I would see it wrong because I'm brought up when, with my friends when someone right. hits us, you, we see it wrong. Right, you might perceive it differently to me because obviously you're standing there, I'm standing here, so we have perception. There is an element of, of subjectivity to it, but is the actual thing occurring? I would say yes. There is actually the a person. Occurs. Yeah, yeah. It is an objective thing. We simply differ over our experience of the objective thing. But even then, we have a lot in common. You saw someone hit me. I experienced someone hitting me. So we both confirm the same objective truth. We just have an element of subjectivity about it. Yeah, and that's the point of the question. Is that is well, well, if you if you agree with that then you do agree with objective, uh, objective reality, and I think that would also apply to all our senses, including morality. Well, you would then have to explain why morality is different. <laughs> why <laughs> morality is different, we sure. touched upon it while we were talking, is that if he hits you, you might see it right, I might see it wrong. So that's subjective. But then the experience, as far as we know, we think it's subjective. But how do we know that our senses are not deceiving us? Sure, well I would say that there is an element of common sense in that, if me and you both see the same thing, we would affirm that it actually happened, right? To our observation. Yes. yes but but this is it. I, I'm asking you to, be, to humble yourself a little bit and just think. If you saw someone attack this gentleman, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid <laughs> and I saw it, and you saw it, and me and you said to each other, we both saw it happen, are you going to deny that and say, that's just coincidence? You know, it, it could be, that may not have actually happened, it could just be our minds playing tricks on us. I would say you would actually affirm it, wouldn't you? And, and every day you would say, yeah, that happened, I saw it. But then I would ask you the question, yeah. is that in a video game, yeah. where, two, okay. where we have three NPCs yeah. who think that they are, they are living a true experience, yeah. and two of them sees one of the other hitting the other one, yeah. is, then, then they observe it. So you're saying ultimately reality? this could all be like the Matrix, it could it all could be, be. Sure. we don't know. But you would have to give a positive argument for believing that. Because your experience doesn't tell you that. No, for believing, I don't need to give a positive argument. For hey, saying that it's a fact, I need to. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, if you're going to posit the theory that we all live in the matrix, you need to give a reason why. No, I'm, I'm saying that this might be. Because your your experience doesn't tell you that. Your, your experience tells you this is real. Well, like, my experience, 
my experience in the video game told me that it might happen to me. Right, right, right. I, I agree with you, it's a possibility, but you need to give arguments as to why. Otherwise, if there's no arguments, I'll simply say, I, it doesn't explain anything new. It's just a theoretical opportunity. If it explains something, like maybe it explains how we experience things, but you then it would be good. Our experiences. Right, but our experiences tell us it's real. And our experience in that video game tells us could it be, might happen. Could be wrong. Yeah. But the possibility of it being wrong is not sufficient enough to believe it. We don't know the possibility. Well, I, yeah, we don't know. But what I'm saying is you need to give some... Either it needs to explain something and be the best explanation of something, or it needs to be more probable than not. But if it isn't either of those two things, there's no reason to believe it. In which case, I'm simply going to say, actually, it is objective because my experience tells me it is, your experience tells you it is, and there's no reason to believe otherwise. Does that make sense? I see where your argument is coming from. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll want to sort of wrap this up now if you want. Yeah. Do you want to sort of summarize, summarize your point of view? Is it, is it okay well, for you to Yeah, of course. We're summarizing. We're wrapping. Well, my point of view is that what I saw, what you were saying, I see clearly where you're coming from. And I see that you're saying that there should be objective morality to our experiences, even though I still don't see you did not back it up by why there should be objective morality, even, and why there should be objective reality. I see your argument where it's coming from, but I, gen I simply believe that it's just a belief. And since it's a belief, I'm not obliged to think so. Not even the best explanation of an experience. Even if it's the best explanation, I'm still not obliged because I need the evidence that I can test. Can I ask, is it the best explanation then? Even if you don't believe... From the things that we had on the table, yeah. there might be things that I still don't know about myself. Sure. Yeah, yeah, could possibly. Could there might be a person here in the park who knows sure, more than sure. me. Sure, but based on what we've talked about... Of the things on the table, currently, you have the best experience. I, I'm happy with that. Thank, Thank you, so you very much. What's your name? Nice Mark. Mark. Oh, nice My name's Chris. Nice well, God bless. Uh, we were talking about objective morality. Yeah. I made the case that objective morality is true, and that God, as a logically necessary being, is the best example of that objective morality. He came I from still the... don't see why there should be objective morality. Okay, alright. That, that's the that's conclusion for me.